Shalom, shalom everyone. Thank you for joining us this week as we continue with our series on spiritual preparedness. And uh, we're talking about spirit of Methibosheth this week. So we started last week by seeing Abba Yahuwah teaches us that obedience to Him like David, like Moses, like so many other men and women in the Bible equals His heart. That's what He wants. Imagine this. Imagine our Heavenly Father is just like you and me. And it might seem strange to you and me, but as you and I ask our children to be obedient, as we expect our children to show love and respect to us by being obedient, Father asks exactly the same thing. Nothing different. You know, and, and so many times I think we think that because He's grace, we can get away with stuff. You know, because we, we so many times get taught that He is the God of love and He is the God of grace, that we start to abuse his, the, the Father's heart. And we abuse the Father's love and we abuse the Father's grace because we think we will not have to face consequences. But my brother and sister, just like your children, just like my children, when they are disobedient, there is consequences. And sooner or later, they're going to have to face those consequences. And you and I need to understand today, as we continue with this, uh, with this message today, that there's consequences to the disobedience. We also read in 2 Samuel 9 that David wants to honor his friend Jonathan. By keeping this promise he made to him. And then we read that. We read how David calls the servants. And he asks the servants. Who in the house of King Saul. Can he show the father's grace to. And then the servant comes forward and says. Yes there's still one person left. One person from the house of King Saul. The son of of Jonathan but the first thing he says but he's lame in his feet the first thing he says is the way this servant sees Methibosheth is that Methibosheth is lame and then he says he's lame in his feet and David says bring him to me so when Methibosheth then comes to the king's uh, castle the king's palace and David sees him and, uh, and, and then David says to him do not fear he says, I will show to you grace, the Father's grace, Yahuwah's grace. I'll give to you your Father's land. And then he says, you'll sit at my table. And we're going to start looking at this today. We're going to start looking at the spirit of Methibosheth. We're going to start looking at being spiritually lame. And we saw that the word, and we discussed it last week, the word appears 25 times in the Bible. But only three times the word that is used for lame is the word noke. It's the Hebrew Strong's uh, concordance number H5223. And it literally means lame. It means to be paralyzed, to be smitten, to be crippled in the physical. But it also means in the spiritual, spiritual to be dejected. To be of a contrite heart, to have a bruised spirit. You see, lame means to be, uh, in the physical, to be paralyzed. But in the spirit, it means to be smitten and bruised. We read in Isaiah 66, verse 1 to 2, Thus said Yahuwah, the heavens are my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you built for me? And where is the place of my rest? And all these my hands has made, all these that exist, declares Yahweh. Yet to such a one I look, listen, yet to such a one I look, on whom who is poor and bruised of spirit, and who trembles at my word. This trembles at my word, my brothers and sisters, that is obedience to the Father's word. That is obedience to His voice. Bruised in the spirit, as we know, it means to humble yourself. 
You see, the one who knows that your war is his strength, that person will humble himself before the Father. So that is to have a contrite heart. Noki, yes, lameness is where you as a person have, um, have this strongly influence or are being influenced by circumstances or people. And, the th and those effects of those influences in our lives, or whether it be physical or whether it be spiritual, that impacts you and me. It impacts our emotions. It impacts our spirit. We also looked at three characteristics of David that we need to know. And we need to understand the Father's heart towards those three characteristics. And that's David's shepherd heart. David's worship heart. And his warrior heart. So what can we learn today from Methibosheth? What can we learn regarding spiritual lameness and how to get spiritually walking and fit again? We need to look at the life of Methibosheth and then we need to study our own lives. You see, the word of Yahuwah or the Bible as we know it was given to us as a tool by which we can measure ourselves to see are we walking the truth? Are we following the footsteps of Messiah? Are we obeying the instructions of the Father just as He gave it? Not as I interpret it. So that so that as the Father so many times says in His Word, so that through obedience we can live. You see, so many times the enemy Satan comes and steals from you and me. So many times people act out of their own selfish needs and wants. Or some, sometimes people are just being spiteful or nasty. And they act like the enemy against you and me. You see, and they come and they steal from us. I'm not just talking about the physical today where we get attacked. Uh, I don't know when we sometimes walk in the street or someone hits my car from the side. I'm not just talking about the physical. I'm talking about the spiritual as well. I'm talking about being abused. I'm talking about someone slandering you and me in the public. The Bible teaches us that Satan is the enemy. And according to John 10.10, 10, it, it reads, the thief does not come except to steal and to slaughter and to destroy. But Yahuwah says, I have come that they might possess life and that they might possess it beyond measures. It means abundantly. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what does Satan come and steal from you and me? Have, have, have we ever wondered about that? Have we ever wondered, does he come and try to steal my faith? Does he come and try to steal my joy, my peace, my health, my destiny, my purposes the Father has for me? You see, this is what we need to ask. Isn't this what happened to Mephibosheth? When we look at what Mephibosheth had, his life, and now he's lame, he's crippled in a physical, isn't that what happened to him his life was stolen from him his joy his peace his health his purposes was stolen from him the first thing we must learn is we cannot allow the injuries the hurts and the pains from our childhood to keep us from walking in our divine destiny isn't that how we sometimes think we think that our past defines us we think that our past defines our future. Because that is sometimes how or what the world teaches us, isn't it? The world and so many people like to remind us about our past. You see, the world and so many people wants us to be stuck in our past. They want us to be focused on our past. But Abba Yah comes in His living word and He reminds us of our future. You see, Abba Yahuwah comes and He gives us promises. He gives us a purpose. Father comes and He reminds us that when we are filled with His Spirit, that He will give us strength, that He will give us life. But again, we don't read our Bibles. We don't spend time on our knees. We don't seek to have fellowship with Abba Yahuwah. So we don't understand that we are the head and not the tail. 
but my brother and sister is spiritual lameness. And therefore we need to start to learn again to walk in the Spirit. We need to learn again to get up and fight in the Spirit. We need to learn so that we can be spiritually prepared and stay spiritually fit. You see, when we are spiritually fit, then the way I've grown up or how I've grown up will not define me. When I'm spiritually fit, then the area I've grown up won't define me. When I'm spiritually fit, then the fact that my parents were poor will not define me. When I'm spiritually fit, then whatever childhood injuries, memories or beliefs I had, or maybe grown up with, or what happened to me in my adult life five or ten or two years ago, that will not define me. You see, this is all still current physical circumstances and issues, yes. Just like Mephibosheth. And we need to deal with it sooner or later in our lives because that will and that can surely define us if we allow it to dominate my thoughts. If we allow it to dominate our emotions and our lives. Mephibosheth was lame in his feet. And maybe he thought he would never have the opportunity to live in a king's palace and enjoy all the benefits of being a child of the king again. You see, that is, that is how it sometimes is with you and me in the spirit. Or even with us emotionally. The enemy comes and binds us with lies. And then we choose to focus on those lies. You see, when we focus on the lies of the enemy, my brother and sister, we miss the open doors of opportunities in our lives. So many times we look at this lie as a mountain before us and we simply can't or don't want to overcome it. We so many times allow our past to determine our future. And today I want us to think long and hard about this. How many times have we allowed our past to define us? Maybe we have become so comfortable with that lie in our lives that we, that we actually believe it. We believe the lie as a truth. Or that is the way it should be. Or it was, or that's the way it was with my grandfather. That was his fate. That was my father's fate. And now we believe that is our fate. You see, my brothers and sisters, we conform to the lies of the enemy because we got used to the lies of the enemy. We sometimes don't question those lies. Isn't it time we start asking Abba Yahuwah, what is the truth? Isn't it time we ask Abba to show us the lies of the enemy that we have believed and conformed to so that we, with the revelation of truth and strength from the Father, can break those lies. It is time we get up spiritually, get into a mindset of preparedness and so that we can stay spiritually fit. Yes, we might not understand each other's pains and circumstances, but I know the one who does. You see, Messiah Yushua knows pain. He knows how it feels when the one you love denies you. He knows how it feels when the one you love hurts you. He knows how it feels when the one you love actually wants to kill you. Messiah knows the pain of having to lose someone. So whatever pain and em uh, emotions we've gone through in life, Messiah Yeshua knows it. Isn't it time we start asking Him, following Him, conforming to Him, and not everything the world or people or the enemy wants us to believe. Whether we are 16 or 60, the Father has a plan for you and me. A plan to be used in His kingdom for His purpose here on earth. I was reminded in my preparation that even Apostle John, when he was weak in his feet and he could not walk, they carried him to the synagogues where he continued to teach the Father's word. And like we've already said, my physical ability or shortcomings should not ever become a reason not to serve the King of Kings. 
We have allowed our spiritual lameness to keep us living beneath our privileges and our destinies. Imagine you're a prince, the son of a king, and then someone comes to you one day and say, you can't do this, or you can't go there, or you're not good enough to be a prince in this kingdom. You're not good enough to be a son or a daughter of, of the king. Will we really stand there and be spoken to like that? Will we really stand still and just listen to these lies and believe them or conform with them? Or will we tell that person to get out of our faces? Will we stand on the fact that I am a prince and my sister, you are a princess of the Most High? And because you dine at his table and he called you my child, therefore we know our rights in this kingdom. You see, but he comes back to the point. We do not read our Bibles. We do not spend time with the Father in intimacy and fellowship. We rather listen to people. That's why we easily conform to lies. Because there's no intimacy with the Father. We have allowed ourselves to listen to lies. We read in 2 Samuel 9 verse 4. So the sovereign said to him, way easy. And Tiba said to the sovereign, see, he is in the house of Makir, son of Amiel in Lodebar. So the second thing we need to look at today is the state of Mephibosheth's state before the blessings. You see, Mephibosheth was in the house of Makir, the son of Amiel in Lodebar. So can we see Mephibosheth's low position in life? He didn't even have his own house. Instead, he lived in a house with another man. Though once a grandchild of a king in the royal line, Mephibosheth was now fatherless, homeless, without destiny, and living with Makir. Makir, or Makir, is the Hebrew Strong's Concordance number h four three. H4353 and it means salt or sold out so Makir this guy his name in Hebrew means sold or sold out then it says he lived in Lodibar Lodibar is the Hebrew concordance number H3810 H3810 and it means no pasture it means to be barren can we see the picture here today that Matthew Boseph was sold into a barren and fruitful existence. My brother and sister, has the enemy sold you and me into a place of no pasture, a place of barren and fruitful existence? Do we now find ourselves sold as slaves unto sin, separated from our true Father, separated from a state of dwelling with the Father to a state of barrenness? No pasture, no land, no home. You see, the Father is coming today and He's calling you and me back home. Like David who asked the servant, Where is, is there someone of the house still left? And they said, Yes, Mephibosheth. He said, Bring him to me. Father is calling you and me home today. Isn't it time we get out there? Isn't it time we get out of the state of barrenness? Isn't it time we let go of what we think we want and let Abba Yahuwah give us what, what He destined us for? We have allowed the devil to tell us we will never be anything. We won't ever be able to accomplish what we've been called for or sometimes even what we dream about. We have allowed loved ones to tell us we are going to be just like our no good parents or my brother or some relative. And then we choose to listen to those lies. We have allowed the devil to tell us that we are the tail instead of the head. That we are beneath instead of above. And we have received and believed the lies. We have allowed ourselves to stay in this place of Lodabar, which is a place of no posture. So the lies has caused us to sit down and shut our mouths. You see, we're supposed to praise the Father. 
but in a spiritual lameness, my brother and sister, in this place of no pasture, in this place of barrenness, do we worship the Father? Do we praise Him? Do, do, do we call upon His name? I encourage you, uh, I, I encourage you to not allow the pains and injuries of our past to keep you and me from being who I was said we should be. It's time to get spiritually prepared. It's time for you and me to get spiritually walking again. It's time for you and me to get spiritually fit again. Psalms 121 verse 1 to 2 we, we read, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from Yahuwah, maker of heaven and earth. You see, I encourage you to bring the pain and the injury of your past to the altar of the Father and be healed because you still have a spiritually given destiny that's waiting for you. I encourage you to drop the spirit of Matthew Boseph and take on the spirit of Messiah Yahushua and become the man and woman Father Yahuwah said and who He created you for. So firstly we saw that do not let your physical injuries determine your heavenly destiny. Because you can have a physical ailment and still be powerful in the spirit, in the Father. Secondly, we have to stop listening to the lies of the enemy that we are destined to stay in this place of barrenness and lameness. You see, there's a purpose. Jeremiah 1.5 says there's a purpose to our lives. The third thing we need to look at is, or that we can learn from Matthew Boseph, we must not allow physical circumstances to make us spiritually lame or to be an excuse to give up. That which causes us to be whom the Father said we are because of our lack of spiritual attitude or mindset. We read in 2 Samuel 9 verse 8, And he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should turn to such a dead dog as I? You see, that was the mindset of Methibosheth. He saw himself as useless. In fact, he, he saw himself as dead, spiritually lame, caused Methibosheth to call himself a dead dog, meaning to be worthless or not worth anything or to see himself as nothing. Isn't this sometimes how we feel? We feel dead. Not able to move in the spirit or to achieve anything, so I might as well be physically dead. Many of us tend to walk in that same spirit of Methibosheth, or spirit of lameness sometimes. Because we don't see ourselves as who Abba Yahuwah said we should be. A lot of times we see ourselves as less because we don't make a certain amount of money. We see ourselves less, or maybe because we are unemployed. Or because we have messed up so many times in life. And yes, sometimes life, our life just deals some people a very bad hand. And so many of us don't cope with that. Or we don't adapt to it. And those circumstances get us down. You see, but we need to get up to them. How about how we sometimes think we know how people perceive you and me. You see, we'll walk in the street and people might look at us and you and I already have this lying thoughts and we think this is how people see us, this is how people perceive us, that's what people think about us. And it's not even the truth, but we believe those lies. Our physical circumstances influence our emotions and our spirit. And then we become negative. You see, we become lame. That causes us to give up and we become lame in our prayer life. We become lame in our Bible study time. We become lame in our praises to the Father, our worship to the King. We become lame in our relationship with our kids. Lame in our marriages because we give up on everything. We lose the love in our lives. We become lame in communication. You see, so many things in our lives appears to be in Lodabar. 
when you and I are spiritually lame, then so many things, like I've just said, our relationship with our, with our kids, uh, colleagues, our bosses, our families, our marriages, that's in Lodabar because we think it's, uh, there's a place of no pasture, there's no growth, it's barren there. That's why we need to get back to the king. So if these relationships are lame, then we know our relationship with Abba Yahuwah is lame. We don't have to stay in a state of lameness, my brother and sister. We don't have to continue to feel sorry for ourselves because we've messed up so many times. In fact, who hasn't messed up? However, we serve a, a Lua who desires to help us, to clean us up to heal and to restore us, to take us out of this place of Lodabar, to take us out of this place of spiritual lameness, to take us out of this place where we are barren and, 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 and unfruitful. So my brother and sister, how lame do we look to the world? How lame spiritually do we walk? Maybe I should ask you, how lame do you feel right now? Are you defeated? Do you feel like Methi Bosef? Do you feel like this dead dog? Do you have a defeated mindset? Do you feel like a victim all the time? Or even just sometimes? Do you feel that you have no options in life? Do you think or believe that your circumstances will never change or improve? You see, when our thinking becomes lame, we settle for self-limiting and even Abba Yahuwah limiting beliefs. You see, even if Abba has this amazing purpose for you and me, if we do not believe it, if we do not see it, then we will not achieve it, my brother and sister. To conform to this dream Abba Yahuwah has for you and me, means that we have to conceive it in our minds. In other words, we must realize the truth. We must think and meditate on His Word. We must think of what the Father says, and we must envision the truth of Yahuwah first. Yes, my brother and sister, we must believe that this is the truth, that this is what conceiving is. It is a seed that needs to be planted and only you and I can do that. We must believe it and then, you see, then we give birth to it. You see, then we start walking in that truth. And that is what conforming to the Father is all about. Conceiving means that a seed is planted of the promises and the purposes of a Yahuwah has planned for us what He has ordained us for, what He has sanctified us for. We must believe His truth and then give birth to that truth in our minds, in other words, our souls and in our hearts and our spirits, only then start to walk in it. When we conceive with our minds and our hearts, our soul and our spirits, what the Father has for us, then we conform to the Father's image. Then we conform to His purposes his abundance that He has for us. So the next time you catch yourself settling for lame thinking, hold a little self-management meeting, my brother and sister. Remind yourself that though life may feel difficult, Abba is still able. Spend a few moments praising Him and thanking Him in advance of what He will do. This is the choice we've got every day. What we think, we become. You see, what we think, we either become negative or positive. If you think that you've been dealt a shorthand in life, then you live according to that. If you think that God owes you something, or the world owes you something, or Abba Yahuwah owes you something, then that becomes your life. And you'll always blame the world, you'll always blame Him, you'll always blame people. You see, Abba has called you and me. He empowered you and me. 
we read in Jeremiah 1 5 before I formed you in the belly I knew you before you came out of the womb I that set you apart I appointed you a prophet to the nations you see the father says that he knows you my brother and sister he knows you he sanctified you and me he ordained us for a purpose he called us for his kingdom he equipped us he set us apart for his kingdom so do you want to be healed from your lameness do you want the lameness in your spirit in your heart in your soul to be to be healed do you want that barrenness that unfruitful thoughts that we so many times walk around with my brother and sister do we want that to be healed then we need to get to the father then we need to start conceiving his promises of abundance his promises of life yes we, and we, we need to start walking in that we, we need to start conforming to that how many times in the bible did we read messiah we should ask the people that he healed if they want to be healed what if Messiah Yahushua came and asked you this question today? What if he would ask you, my son, my daughter, do you want to be healed? What would you say? Would you conceive this promise? Would you start walking in that promise? Would you conform to that promise? You see, it is there. It's there, right there, where you and I feel like a dog. It's when you and I are hopeless. It's there when you and I feel we're in Lodabon, this place of barrenness and unfruitfulness. It's there that we need to call on to the Father. It's there where we need to conceive His blessings and His promises and the life He has for you and me. Jeremiah 1.5, we need to conceive that, walk in that and conform to that. Father wants to heal you today. He wants to uplift you to His table. It is in your marriage where, where Father wants to restore. It is in the relationships where He needs to restore. It's in a relationship between you and Him that He wants to restore today. You see, it's there in that physical sickness where we need to believe to be healed. It is there in our spiritual lameness that we should ask for healing. We should ask for restoration, my brother and sister, and we need to conceive it. We need to believe it and then start walking in it. We need to conform to that. You see, the blind man had to believe before he was healed. The physically lame man had to believe before he was healed. The leper had to believe before he was healed. They all had to conceive this miracle before they could start walking in it. What is the impossible thing? Or what lameness in the spirit are you and I facing today? that we need restoration from, that we need healing from. Do we believe in this miracle working power of the Father? Do we really want to be healed? We are so many times paralyzed by fear. What was the cause of Methibosa's lameness? You see, the maid acted out of fear. A fear came over his nurse and she took him in her arms and she started running and he fell. You see, fear paralyzed Methibosheth. Is fear paralyzing you and me today? Do we give in to fear? Do we listen to fear? Do we listen to the lies of the enemy? Because we think we can't face the future. We've lost so much. How can I even, how, how can the Father even expect me to face the future when I've lost so much? You see, that is spiritual lameness. Do we think that Matthew Bosa thought while lying in this man's house that he would be living in a king's palace again? I don't think so. So again, what impossible thing do we fear about? What impossible thing do we carry around 
that we need healing from? What history do we carry around that we cannot let go of? What do we think we cannot let go of? When we think we face the impossible, then that normally means we are no longer, my brother and sister, when we think we face the impossible, then that means we can no longer solve the problem ourselves. Then it means we can no longer act in our own strong. And that is when we need the Father's strength. That is when we can overcome the lies and the fears of the enemy. You see, when we give up, and we start relying on the Father when we start conceiving His promises for us. Then we can start walking in it. You see, we are not lost. You and I are not stranded. We are not to stay at this place of barrenness. This place of unfruitfulness. This place where we feel destitute or maybe even lonely. You see, Father is calling us. To the king's table. Abba Yahuwah wants to intervene today. Have you asked him today? You see when we start asking the father. When we humble ourselves. When we see ourselves as a servant approaching the table. Then his hand of salvation starts to work. Then we can see his miracle working power. And then only then we know it is by his strength. And not ours. Without Messiah, we shall we are spiritually lame and paralyzed. My brother and sister, do we realize this? Romans 5, 6 says, For when we were still weak, Messiah in due time died for the wicked. That weak, Strong's Concordance G772, it means without strength. Physically, yes, it means to be sick, but it means to be feeble. In other words, without salvation, the, the original word means helpless, infirm, feeble, unable to achieve anything great, sluggish in doing right. Isn't this an amazing picture of spiritual lameness? Isn't this the picture of uh, the spirit of Methibosheth? The wicked, where it says, um, and, and Messiah in due time died for the wicked, this wicked, it's a strong number, G765. Yes, it means ungodly, but it means those who need salvation. Just in Romans 5, 6, we see that through Messiah Yeshua's death, we receive strength from weakness. We receive His salvation and authority so that we can get up and walk and be spiritually fit to receive the everlasting life. How amazing is this verse? Are we ready to get up and walk, my brother and sister? Or are we still stuck in unfruitfulness and barrenness? Are we still lame in the spirit? I want you to open your mind today about this question. Because to be lame in the spirit could just be the right place. Listen, to be lame in the spirit could just be the right place where we can meet the Father. There where we paralyze. Where we no longer walk in our own strength. Where we no longer do things in our own strength. Where we no longer have our ideas. Where we no longer follow the world or people. Where we lay by this bath and we wait for Messiah to come and heal us. Where we sit next to the road and we wait for Messiah to come and heal us. We, we wait for the king to call us closer to his table so that he can feed us. You see, my brother and sister, that exactly, that is where the father wants us. Because then he can heal us. When we understand it's no longer through my strength, but it's his. It's no longer my power to save, but his power to save. Isaiah 66 verse 2 we read for my hand made all these things thus all these things come into being declares Yahweh but to this one I will look to him who is humble and contrite bruised of spirit who trembles at my word you see he says but to this one I will look 
The Hebrew word for look is nabat, and it means to look intensely at, to look at someone with pleasure, with favor, or with care. You see, when we approach the king with our lameness, with this contrite heart, with humbleness, then the Father says, He will turn His head towards you and me. He will look at you and me intently. He will look at us with pleasure and favor and care. So when we are weak, when we need salvation, then Father looks intently on us with favor and with care. So Abba is saying today, this is the one I'll regard. This is the one I'll take pleasure in. This is the one I'll favor and care for. But first, we have to humble ourselves, my brother and sister. We have to come to the Father. We have to come to Him as a servant. You see, that's what Matthew both have said. When the king called him, he said, Here's your servant. We need to humble ourselves. No longer my strength. No longer me providing for myself. No longer me looking uh, out for myself. But now the king providing. The king looking out for me. The king serving. Oh, sorry, the king protecting me. Can we see what Abba Yahuwah is saying here today to you and me? He's not calling for the spiritual giants, my brother and sister. Abba is saying we don't have to have it all together. We don't have to have a perfect life or live an example life for others to follow. You see, He will raise us up and He'll equip us to get there and to be there. We do not need to be strong warriors in the Spirit when He calls us to come to Him. No, no, no. Father is saying, come as you are. Bring your broken spirit. Bring your broken life and I will look upon you with favor, with grace, with pleasure and I will lift you up. You see, Father calls us as we are, but He will never just leave you and me that way. He will give us purpose and life again. And we go back to Jeremiah 1 verse 5. We were created, my brother and sister, we were created for purpose. Mephibosheth's story starts with the fall. And through that fall, he became crippled and lame. He could no longer walk as he had been destined and created to do. Isn't that what happened to us in the Garden of Eden? We, men, also fell. Men fell into sin and removed from, uh, from the presence of our Heavenly Father. You see, we all became crippled and lame because of what happened in the garden. But now the Father calls us home. He calls us to come closer to Him again. Matthew 5 verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the reign of the heavens. That poor, again, G4434, it means poor as in no health or wealth, but it also means lowly afflicted, destitute of virtues. It means helpless. It means powerless to accomplish something. Can we see this lameness? Jeremiah 79 says, The heart is deceitful, in other words, crooked above all things, and desperately wicked, in other words, sick. Who can know it? You see, the heart is not only wicked, it is deceitful. It is deceiving. Because we believe the lies of the heart so many times. Can we see this? He says the heart is two things. It is deceitful and sick. You see, we learn that Mephibosheth was not just crippled. It's not that he walked with difficulty or that he dragged his one foot. No, the word says that he was lame in both of his feet. You see, we are not so good as we think we are. The problem according to the Bible is far worse than what we think how brilliant you and I are. How amazing you and I think we are. The word teaches us that we are deceitful and sick. Only when you and I, my brother and sister, realize that we are not so amazing as we think we are. 
that we actually do become crippled in the spirit sometimes. And that I, that you and I need our King and Heavenly Father to help us, to carry us, to support us, to protect us, to provide for us. Then only can we start to grow in the spirit. You see, because then we can humble before the King. It's all about having a surrendered lifestyle. To give up all our own will and subject our thoughts and wills to the Father. To conform to Him and His purpose. To surrender not just the physical but also the spiritual. We must believe, so we must conceive the Father's work. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all matters work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to His purpose. You see, that purpose, His purpose, is to conform to that. Jeremiah 29.11 says, For I know the plans I'm planning for you, declares Yahuwah, plans of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and an expectancy. You see, the Bible teaches us that Abba Yahuwah knows the end from the beginning. And that's what he says here, is to give you a future and an expectancy. Because the Father knows the end, He has planned your purpose for that end. That's why there's an expectancy for it. You see, but spiritual lameness keeps us back from that expectancy. A spiritual lameness, this unfruitful land, this place of barrenness, keeps us away from this predicted end that the Father has in plan for us. We read in Matthew 16, 24 to 25, Then you shall say to his taught ones, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. This is a call for you and me to get back to fellowship and intimacy with Messiah. Then the promises are for you and me. You know, so many people, so many Teachers teach and preach these wonderful motivational messages about the promises of the Father. About again, like I said, how we at the head and not the tail, how we above and not beneath, how we first and how we not last and all that stuff. But there's one thing missing in all of that, my brother and sister, and that is fellowship with the Messiah. There's one thing missing and that is intimacy with Him. You see, Father is looking for the one who trembles at His word. This is the one whom Father dwells with. Abba Yahuwah is not interested in temples made with hands. Do you know what that means? It means He's not interested in my personal works. He's not interested in my words or my opinions. He's not interested in what I can do in my strength. He's not interested in this wealth I've accrued or accumulated here on earth. Father is not interested in religion and rituals. He wants a contrite and a broken heart, a spirit that desires Him, that seeks Him and loves Him above anything else. Father is looking for someone that humbles and submits to His word. We read in John 14, 23, And Yahushua answered him, If anyone loves me, he shall guard my word, and my Father shall love him, and we shall come to him and make our stay with him. Those that have a contrite heart or a broken spirit, you see, must be spiritually aware of the presence of the Father. That is what's missing in our lives sometimes. If we do not humble ourselves, if we do not have this contrite heart, this broken spirit, then we do not, uh, we are not aware of the presence of the Father. Therefore, we need to get back to that. So we now saw that we should not let our spiritual weakness determine our walk with the Father. 
as we continue we read 2 Samuel 9 verse 5 and it says and sovereign David sent and brought him out of the house of Makir son of Amiel from Lodebar so David said to the servant go and fetch him didn't Messiah pay, pay the price for you and me so that we too can come to him we read in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 for you were bought with a price therefore esteem a lure in your body and in your spirit which are of a lure spiritual preparedness and fitness is about glorifying the king it's about honoring our heavenly father and savior not just with our bodies not just with our works of faith but also with our spirit with our mind with our heart David wanted to bless Methibosheth because he knew the father's heart we read in Luke 19 10 for the son of Adam has come to seek and to save what was lost Messiah wants to save my brother and sister he wants to restore Matthew 10 6 but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel you see in Lodabar you and I we are lost Messiah came for you and me my brother and sister Messiah is looking for you and me so that he can bless us and show favor towards us when David heard about Methibosheth his first question was where is he after the fall of Adam in the Garden of Eden the first thing father said was where are you Abba is and has always been looking for you and me he wants us to come closer to him Revelation 3 20 says see I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I shall come into him and dine with him and he with me father is knocking and calling are you hearing his voice do you have an urgency in your spirit to fellowship with him John 6 44 we read no one is able to come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I shall raise him up in that last day are we hearing the father is he drawing you and me closer is he knocking on our hearts is he calling us home just like Matthew boasts that we are blessed because of someone else you see Matthew boasts have received this blessing or this promise his father made with the king with David and now we are blessed by the father because of what Messiah did again Messi Boseph was blessed because of what his father Jonathan did Matthew Boseph was blessed because he was the son of Jonathan it's not, not what Matthew Boseph did it wasn't that Matthew Boseph was anything great in him or of himself he was physically lame and needed others to help and to attend to him but David was looking for someone to bless for Jonathan's sake we too as followers as true believers are blessed because of another we are blessed because of Messiah we are accepted in the beloved we read in Ephesians 1 verse 6 to the praise of the esteem of his favor with which he favored us in the beloved that is why we praise him we have no strength before Abba Yahuwah in ourselves Yeshua is our life he is our strength we stand before the Father in him he is our standing we are blessed because of him we read in verse 6 and Matthew both of son of Jonathan son of Shaul Saul came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance and David said Mephibosheth and he answered he is your servant you see obeisance is to lay yourself down to humble yourself to bow down low to be face down before the king are we face down before our king so we read that when Mephibosheth got to the king David that he fell on his face he showed respect and reverence 
Matthew Boseph didn't understand why he would be so blessed. He didn't see anything in himself that should require the king to be so kind and gracious. And yet he found himself blessed. Nonetheless. You see, a Messiah Yusha wants to bless us, my brother and sister. Not because of what we did, but because of what he did. We read in verse 6 that David called out Mephibosheth and his answer was, Here is your servant. So how do we approach the Father? What respect do we show him? What if the King and Creator of heaven and earth would call your name today, my brother and sister, would you lay yourself down before him? Would you humble yourself before my Messiah Yahushua? Would you open the door for him to come in so that he can fellowship with you? So that you can sit at the table of the Father. Verse 7. David then said to him, Do not fear, for I shall certainly show you loving commitment because of Jonathan your father, and shall return to you the land of Saul your grandfather, and let you eat bread at my table continually. King David makes four statements, and three of them are blessings. You see, there's something you and I need to do before we are blessed. And that is, fear not. So he says, fear not. I will show towards you kindness or grace. I will restore to you the land of the Father. You shall eat at my table continually. So statement number one, or what I like to call an internal truth, or fact number one, is do not fear. You see, Father does not act in fear. Father wants us to fear not, to be at peace and be still. You are not being punished, my brother and sister. What happened to Methi Boseph went through, or what Methi Boseph went through was not punishment, but misfortune. When Abba Yahuwah wants to move in your life and in my life, then He wants us to, to, to not to fear. Not to be afraid. We so many times ask Abba to do something in our lives. To maybe remove something or to give something. But then he does it. And it's not always the way we want it or how we expected it to be. You see Abba Yahuwah knows the end from the beginning. So he will always act with the end in mind. And not necessarily the way we want it to. Abba tells us fear not. He gives us this command so many times in the Bible. In fact, people say 365 times. I've not studied it. But it's one fear not for each day of the year. But if you look in context, this command is telling us to stand. Every fear not command comes with explanations why we should not fear. You see, Abba Yahuwah is always saying that He is with us. He will save us. So many times he speaks to Joshua, to Moses, to Gideon, to David. He says, fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I will save you. Fear not, I will protect you. You see, Abba comes today, my brother and sister, and he says to you and me, fear not. And here we see David does exactly the same. Because he knows the Father's heart. He tells Matthew Boseph not to fear. And then he goes on to explain why. Abba Yahuwah always reminds us that He is with us, my brother and sister. He's fighting our battles. He, he won't just let us go. But He wants you and me not to fear. Not to fear the future. Not to fear for whatever we think is in store. And that is what David is telling Matthew Bosa. Fear not because you will receive the grace from heaven. You see, David started moving in Mephibosheth's life. He started the process of restoration to bring him back to the presence of the king. How many times does Father Yahuwah start to move in our lives, but then we get so afraid? How many times do we start changing the things that is happening in our lives because it doesn't suit us, because it makes us afraid sometimes, because it doesn't make sense sometimes? What would have happened if Mephibosheth decided not to go to the king when he was calling him. Do you think he would have still received the full blessing? 
How many times do we ask Abba Yahuwah to bring changes in our lives? But then when He does, then we kick against it. When the Father does move, then we try to stop Him. You see, so many times we pray and ask Abba to heal a marriage. You see, and that might mean that I have to take my eyes off my secretary. That might mean that I have to spend more time at home. I ask the Father to heal my relationship with the kids. And then He goes and gives me more time away from work or my business so that I can focus on my kids or my family. But what do we do? Now we start worrying about our work or we start playing more golf. You see, why pray for something when we start changing it? Sometimes we ask for restorations in whatever relationship, but then that means that I might have to humble myself first. You see, if I ask for restoration in my relationship with my father, then it might mean I have to take up the phone, call him and go and see him and apologize to him for that relationship to be restored. If I have to restore my relationship with my brother, it might mean that I, I have to humble myself before him. So what relationships, my brother and sister, do you need to humble yourself for so that it can be restored? What are we asking of the Father? Are we really sure we want Him to restore and to heal what we ask? You see, I always say, be careful of what you ask for, my brother and sister, because Father might just give you what you've asked Him. And it might not be in the way that you wanted it or think it will happen or expected it to happen. You see, Abba Yahuwah is above our emotions, our thoughts, our wants and our needs. If I have to ask you today, what is the opposite of love, what would you say? We read in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For Lua has not given us the spirit of cowardice, in other words fear, but of power and of love and self-control. 1 John 4 verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear holds punishment, and he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In other words, he who fears has not conformed to love. He who fears has not conceived love in his heart yet. Can we understand this? The Lion of Judah is fearless. Abba is asking you and me to be fearless. We all face moments of fear that creep in and steal our joy and peace. You see, I'm not talking about today fear when you're driving on the road. I'm talking about fear in relationships. Fear in the destinies the Father has for us, purposes Abba Yahuwah has for us, spiritual uh, truths that the Father has for us. What fear is the enemy trying to cripple you and me with today? You see, so that we do not reach our potential. So that we do not fulfill our God-given purpose, our Heavenly Father-given purpose. What is the enemy using to hold us back from to achieving our spiritual maturity? So that the Father can use us for His purpose. So that we can be spiritually ready and fit. What do we have to face, my brother and sister, to overcome our fears? You see, Mephibosheth had to face the king. He had to humble himself before the king. He had to overcome his fear to receive the blessing. Are we ready to overcome our fear so that we can receive our blessing? Are we ready to face our heavenly King? Are we ready to face our Creator? Are we ready to face our Heavenly Father? With a contrite heart. So that we can receive our blessing. Can we see that Father desires the spiritually lame? The ones that is not full of themselves. You see, fear in the natural makes us lame in the spirit because we lose hope. 
because we conform with the lie of the enemy. So let's humble ourselves before the Father today and let's come closer to Him as He calls us to come closer to Him. Let's conceive the promises, the protection and the provisions of the Father in our hearts and minds and let's start walking in His truth. Let's conform to His image. Let's pray. Abba Yahuwah, Father, I thank you for this day, for the life that you've given us for this day, Father. I thank you, my King, that you are the one who sits on the throne, that you are the one who is in control, and that you are the one who knows the end from the beginning. And Father, according to Jeremiah 1.5, you know us, Abba. Before we, we were formed in our mother's womb, you knew us, Abba. You've given us a destiny. You've sanctified us. You've ordained us with a purpose, my King. And this is my prayer, Father, for those who call you upon your name, for those who humble themselves, for those who seek your face, who seeks your presence, Abba Yahuwah, that you reveal to them your truths, that you reveal to them the purposes you have ordained for them, Father, that you restore them back to life, your life, my King, that you'll strengthen them, that you'll show favor towards them, Father, that you'll restore what the enemy has stolen, my King, the shalom. Restore their health, restore their joy, restore their peace, Father. Abba, will you lift us up? Will you restore us back to the road, Father, that leads to you? The road that we've dwelled off from. Will you restore us back to that, my King, so that we can get to you? So that we can follow you? So that we can be in your presence and fellowship with you, my Abba? That's my prayer for everyone, Abba Yahuwah, that we'll get out of this place of Lodaba, where we've been sold into, Father, where we've believed the lies of the enemies, Abba Yahuwah, as that you'll restore us out of that, that you'll take us to a place where we will be fruitful in the Spirit for your kingdom, Abba. Like Psalms 23 says, Father, that we'll walk in green pastures. That we'll walk where you are, my King. I praise you and I honor you. And I pray all of this in your son Yahushua's mighty name because in him and through him we have our life and we have authority. Let your will be done in our lives, my King Yahushua. Receive this blessing from the Father. Yevarechecha Yahuwah vishmerecha. Yayer Yahuwah panavelecha vichunecha. Yesa Yahua Panavelecha Via Sem Lecha Shalom. Abba Yahua blesses you and keep you. Abba Yahua makes his face shine upon you and he'll be gracious to you. Abba Yahua lifts up his countenance upon you, my brother and sister, and he gives you peace. Shalom, shalom. Enjoy the rest of your week.